What the? Ladies and gentlemen, I, I, we just went live on air with NWA Power, and all of a sudden we see uh, what is to, uh, a brawl, a brawl going on in the midst, literally, and uh, May Nomura's out there trying to, I don't know if, what he's doing, if he's trying to stop the chaos or anything that's going on, but literally all five men just appeared in the middle of the ring, just brawling. I don't understand what's going on. Basically, all of them has claimed to the IWG, or not the IWGP, but they never, the NWA World Heavyweight Championship. I, I don't know what on God's green earth is going on here. All I can say is that all five of these men believe that they should be fighting uh, Nick Aldis for the I, for the Never Openweight Championship next. I, I'm going to stop this. I'm, I'm going to stop this. Oh my. What on God's green earth is going on? I'm not sure if you all saw this or not, but it was TJP, uh, Alexander Hammerstone, Chris Hero, uh, Rohit Raju, Zack Sabre Jr. Basically, all four of them, or five of them, started out with a brawl to start off the show. Literally, all of them claiming, staking claim to the NWA, NWA Championship. But later on the show, we're going to give more insight on all of them, why they feel they should be champion, but... We gotta do something about this. We gotta do something about about this brawl. If all five of these men feel like fighting, then I feel as if it is my duty to let them fight. So here is what we are going to do next week. NWA Power is going to be a very special episode. It is going to feature our first ever gauntlet match ever to happen here on NWA. It will be the five superstars we saw in the ring. TJP, Zack Sabre Jr., Chris Hero, Alexander Hammerstone, Rohit Raju, and a sixth superstar of my picking. Those six superstars will compete in a gauntlet match next week to determine who will be the next number one contender for the NWA World Heavyweight Championship currently held by Nick Aldis. But... For, for literally those four superstars ruining the opening of the show there is going to be a consequence and that consequence is simple there is going to be a battle royal in the main event of today's show the way this is going to work is your elimination order determines what spot you are going to get in the gauntlet match my mystery competitor he will already be coming in at number one so the first one eliminated will be number two the second one eliminated, number three, and so on and so forth. It is now official. Let's get on to our, I guess, our second scheduled match of the evening in which we are going to be seeing the wrestling prodigies go against Gorillas of Destiny. But while we're going into this, I'm getting some words on basically the, the five men who attacked the ring today. Their claims to the titles. First off is, well, Alexander Hammerstone. He defeated Chris Hero last night, or last week, in the knockout match. So he feels as if that title is rightfully his. Or at least he should be given a shot. Not to mention, in the battle royal that, that Rich Swan won, Alexander was second. So he believes, in, in all fairness, that line, he's next in line. Meanwhile, you have Chris Hero, who's going to stop at nothing but to let Alexander Hammerstone not reach that point in his career. And if anything to stop him, he's going to be in the ring trying to stop him. So there's there's two explanations for you, but it still leaves Rohit, ZSJ, and TJP, which we'll hear more about later on in the night. Coming out now is the Wrestling Prodigies. We have not seen Joe Henning and Taylor Rotunda in a number of weeks. And now they are back and ready to do some damage. Meanwhile, you have these two men right here. The Gorillas of Destiny, Tabatunga and Tungaloa, made a shocking debut at Hard Times. But that matchup was not the match for the Gorillas of Destiny, ladies and gentlemen. As we saw, the Gorillas of Destiny ended up losing to the Arsenal. And I want to say record time. Here's hoping that if they could defeat the wrestling prodigies here, it would help propel them 
back to where they belong, back to the to the tag team championship realm, you could say. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to know who you got winning this matchup, the Wrestling Prodigies or Gorillas of Destiny. As we're going on, hello, Kian. Welcome to today's show. Thank you for showing up. Looks like we're getting Joe Henning starting things off against Tamatanga. Ring the bell and here we go. First matchup of the evening is happening right now. Joe Henning, Tamatanga. First time we're seeing these two tag teams go at it. Heck, we haven't even seen Wrestling Prodigy since our first pay-per-view back for the attack. And now, oh, a spear but countered there from Joe Henning. Heading now, gonna try, oh, not gonna try and pin. Try to go for something else here, pick it up, Tamatanga now gonna throw him into the corner. Gotful for Grills of Destiny as our winner here for tonight. Now, Tamatanga again, just trying to get some offense here. Joe Heading not gonna let him have it. Right now, putting on some great defense here. Reversal there now from Tamatanga, reversal again from Joe Henning. Going him up against the ropes. Collision in the middle of the ring. Not Nothing going to happen after that, though. Tamatunga fighting out of the corner now, as you saw. Taylor Rotunga trying to take a cheap shot there on Tamatunga. Now, what? Tamatunga. All right, setting him up. All right, setting him up. Cutter. Middle of the ring. Cutter. Goes to the cover immediately. One, two. And kick out two from Joe Henning. That was close, too. It looked like that was going to be it right there. Joe Henning now. Henning now, what is he going to go for here? Joe Henning just trying to get that win here. Trying to continue the undefeated streak of the wrestling prodigies. Currently only two tag teams in NWA, I think, are currently undefeated. That is the Arsenal and the wrestling prodigies. As now, Joe Henning, top rope. Here we go. Outside Superplex. Tatama Tonga. Oh my. This is a damaged John Joe Henning taking a moment to talk to the crowd, enjoying his handiwork. And now back and forth action between these two. Manny Nomura barking at the, for the two competitors to get back into the ring. The thing is, they don't have to get back in the ring if they don't want to. Right now, ref at a count of five. These two men need to get back in the ring before the count of ten. Otherwise, it will result in a count out. Now, oh! Joe Henning throwing Tamatunga up against the post. And, oh, and now we'll right off the... And look at this. Joe Henning just go for the damage. Meanwhile, Tungaloa... Unintentionally causing the loss... For the Grills of Destiny, what? What is going on with the Grills of Destiny here? They were used to be a force to be reckoned with. Now, I, I don't even know. Right there, Tongaloa basically just ruining the match for, for the Grills of Destiny here tonight. What is going on? Regardless of the fact, these are your winners right here. Wrestling Prodigies, count out or no count out, they won the match. I don't know. I don't think this is going to be the last time we're going to see this matchup because, uh, honestly, I want to see a, a full length matchup between these two. A lot of sketchy work going on in today's episode of NWA Power. Yeah, the brawl to start off literally ruining the first matchup, which was supposed to be Rohit Raju versus Zack Sabre Jr. Their rematch from Hard Times. And now a count-out victory, but the worst part about it is Tama, or Tunga Loa throwing Joe Henning back into the ring. I don't know, but we are cruising right along in NWA Power this week. Coming up next is Jade Cargill, the woman who could not put down Big Swole at hard times versus Kira Hogan. Hogan, the one who was able to put a stop to Abaddon's streak. 
and defeated her, become the new NWA Women's Championship. Remember, it is not Jade Cargill who will face Kira Hogan next for the NWA Women's Championship. It is Big Swole. At our next pay-per-view, it is confirmed that the, the first match confirmed for for uh, our next pay-per-view is is Big Swole versus Kiara Hogan for the NWA Championship. Big matchup right there, in my in my opinion. And I will be announcing the uh, next pay-per-view by the end of the night, right before the main event. Before that, give a little bit more insight onto the uh, the brawl to be getting. So we heard already from er, about Alexander Hammerstone and Chris Hero. Coming out next, though, has to do with Zgis J. The fact that his match was interrupted by Rich Swan against then and still NWA World Champion Nick Aldis. We never got that full, real match of ZSJ versus Nick Aldis, in which Zack Sabre Jr. wants that. He craves that. He wants to be in that main event spot, and he knows he can do it. Meanwhile, you have TJP, in which TJP point was honestly pretty easy to get behind. He knows the devastation that Zack Sabre Jr. has caused in other companies, such as New Japan Pro Wrestling. He is not going to let him get away with what he's did in New Japan. So instead, he's going to make sure that ZSJ does not get that spot by entering himself. I mean, honestly, TJP has a point. We saw Zack Sabre Jr. run, like, basically steam, steamroll through New Japan Pro Wrestling throughout his entire career there. And he's afraid that it's going to happen again here. Old rivals begin again, honestly, with TJP versus ZSJ. Anyways, we will hear about uh, Rohit Raju after this matchup as we now get ready for some women's action. There she is, title around her waist. The first new champion in NWA it is the new NWA women's champion, Kira Hogan. First one to dethrone an inaugural champion here. She was able to put away Abaddon at hard times. Meanwhile, you have Jade Cargill who lost to Big Swole at hard times. You have literally the number one woman versus, honestly, a woman who, other than her victory versus Diamante, is not looking too good. Regardless of the fact, Jade Cargill, Kiara Hogan. Here we go. This is a match that we could have saw if Jade had defeated... Big Swole. Right there, though. Oh, Ray Kara Hogan stripping up the leg. And now Jade Cargill returning the favor, trying to go for a knockout punch. Unable to do so. Back and, back and forth action as this matchup already continues. Hello, AJ. By the way, welcome to the chat. Now Kara Hogan throwing off Jade Cargill. Jade now. Oh, what a slap. Oh, what a second. This time, Kara Hogan returning the favor. Kick to the midsection now. And oh, what a clothesline. Jade Cargill right now in full control of Kira Hogan. Trying to go for a bicycle kick. Unable to do so. And now... Oh, big reversal again from Jade. And now what the heck? Nearly throwing over the ropes. Jade Cargill now. Full control of Kira Hogan. This is... Not looking good for the champion. This is your first night out as champion. You want to make a statement. You want to show everybody that she's going to be a strong champion. Oh, my. Dear. I, pure deadlift off the ground to literally a foot over your head. The power of Jade Cargill. I don't care if you think she sucks or not. You cannot deny the strength of Jade Cargill. And now, oh, snap suplex there for this time from Kira Hogan. Hogan, first one to go for the submit cover. Unable to sue, so. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now going for the submission. Remember, it was a submission that put away Jade Cargill at hard times. She tapped out to Big Swole after taking a big, big shot onto the concrete. Roll up now. The rope break there. Now, Getting hit in the back. Jade Cargill back up to her feet. Trying to go for a clothesline there. Jade Cargill now being thrown up against the ropes back here. Hogan jumping under. Jumping over. Trying to go for a chop. Unable to do so, but caught the legs. Kira Hogan right now trying to find her place back into this matchup here. 
Now look at this. Go for the submission maneuver again on Jade. Jade Cargill right now. Not going to go for that. Not going to fall for the submission again. Oh, and a knee this time. Potentially knocked out Kira. Oh, well, maybe not. Now grab that. Oh, my goodness. Jade Cargill right now looking great here against Kira Hogan. Trying to go for that clothesline again. Unable to do so. Now it's said Kira Hogan throwing Jade off the ropes. Look at that. Trying to chop the, the much larger woman down. Oh my. And just bench pressing her. Oh dear lord. Goes for the cover. Is that going to do it? One. Two. And almost. Almost took the win away from Kira Hogan. Now Jade setting up Kira. Trying to put her away. Trying to honestly make a point. Here and now. Has her up and down. Goes through the cover here. Is that going to do it? One. Two. Kick out two from Kira Hogan. Hogan survives, honestly. Jake Cargill now going to the middle rope here. Oh, driving the knees right into the midsection. Now, oh, Kara Hogan catches the leg. Kara Hogan now. Hogan has Jade Cargill up. Has her up and oh, drops her right on the top rope. Now, Kara Hogan again just trying to rip the arm off of, off of Jade Cargill. Now picking her back up. What's she going to go for here? Not going to go for anything. Jade with the reversal. Sends her plummeting back down. Now, Jay Cargill picking back up Kira Hogan. What is she going to go for here? Trying to go for that kick to the midsection. Unable to connect with it, though. And now, what the? A Selena Del Sol from Kira Hogan. Kira now. Kira feeling it. A little shade from our NWA national champion, Samurai Del Sol, who we'll be seeing next. And now, picking up. Picking her up. And now, oh, mamma mia! Kira Hogan on fire now. And oh, and uh, almost the closest kick out you're going to see here. Jade Cargill nearly taking the L here. And now, Kira. Oh, trying to set up Jade. Unable to do so, though. Jade now. Oh, what a boot. What a big boot to the face of Kira Hogan. Oh, trying to go for that sidekick again. Now, what is Kira Hogan planning next? Oh, kick. Trying to take out the legs here. Both women now. Oh, my goodness. Now, oh, Kira. Kira Hogan had Jake Cargill trapped under the bottom rope. Her foot got stuck after going for that big boot. Is that enough? Oh my goodness. No, it is not. Jade Cargill surviving. Now Kira Hogan. Kira now. Has a hold of Jade. Has a hold of Jade. And that could be it right there. Kira now going for the cover. One. Two. Three. Oh my goodness. Kara Hogan just put away Jade Cargill. Right there. That almost put away Kara right there. It was so close, honestly. If she had just gone for the cover rather than letting go after that huge power bomb, that might have won. Right there, that kick right to the face. Took two of them, two too many. Pulled her away from the ropes, very smart. Remember, like I said, Jade's leg got caught in the ropes after that, after that second big boot miss. That champ is off to a very good start in her career. She defeated Abaddon, she defeated Jade Cargill. Like I said, she's got a date. 
She's got a date at hard, or not at hard time, but the fought next pay-per-view. With Big Swall. As we move on to our next scheduled matchup, I told you guys we are going to be seeing the man here tonight. And that man, of course, is the NWA national champion himself. It is Samurai Del Sol, fresh off a of victory against P.D. Williams at hard times. This time going to be going one-on-one -on -one against the Pope in hopes to continue his big undefeated reign. But before we go into that, we talked about Zack Sabre Jr., TJP, Chris Hero, and of course Alexander Hammerstone's all their reasonings for wanting to be don't want to be Nick Aldis's next challenger. But what we haven't heard of is Rohit Raju, and do we really want to hear from Rohit Raju? I mean, this guy is a chump. This guy is, doesn't even belong. This guy should have never even been been there in this situation, but he feels like he is because he defeated Rich Swan right before hard times. In fact, I even hear him, heard him saying that he believes Rich Swan lost because basically he lost to he lost to him right beforehand. Or he Raju basically marking himself as the guy, saying I'm going to be the one to take the title off him and give him my shot, even though he ran from the fight at hard times against ZSJ. And regardless of the fact. Sting apparently decided to give this guy his matchup. He's going to be part of that gauntlet match next week. He's going to be part of the battle royal here tonight. Like I said, you, the, the whole point of this battle royal is to give everyone an opportunity for their slots in the gauntlet match for next week. The person who wins this battle royal is going to be down to the final two in the gauntlet match. That is huge. That is beyond huge. Only one, That means it's literally going to be down to that person who is going to have the freshest start Versus whoever is number five. The Pope has this. I don't know. The Pope very well could. If he wins this, I mean, it would kind of mark him as the next number one number one contender for the NWA National Championship. Regardless, though, there is your current champion, Samurai Del Sol. And what a champion he has been, undefeated, and honestly, this this man has been destructive. Since joining NWA, the inaugural champion won it from Toa Hinari, who we have not seen since since the loss. The Pope is from T or, um, NWA IRL, or I guess he is old TNA. I guess if Keen says so, I'm pretty sure he was old NWA. I could be wrong on that. <clears throat> Kean seems to know, though. Okay, now you know who he is. Okay, very well. I guess Kean's right. <laughs> Regardless of the fact, here he is. The Pope getting ready for action. The Pope, of course, one of those members of the Fatal 4-Way matches at attack, back for the attack. I haven't seen very much out of him since then. But he's here. He believes that he could be a champion if given the opportunity. Well, no other opportunity than this right here. You're going one or going against the current national champion, which pretty big. Honestly, you're going to be going against Samurai Del Sol, a guy who, despite his size, has been able to pull off some pretty amazing feats in the ring. Currently, he is four or three and zero oh in the NWA, defeating defeating Toa Hanare. Of course, P.D. Williams last week. At back or at hard times, and he also defeated uh, or um, Larry De Kid. I keep on getting his name mixed up because it's not Lorard, it's Larry. All right, here we go. Samurai sells Soul versus the Pope one on one first time here. Sammy, here we go. And right now, trying to get some offense here is the Pope unable to do so. Man and more, of course, are always reverie. And you can see in the corner of the Pope is none other than Great Muta, NWA legend, by I add you. I actually heard in the back NWA or back of NWA power, uh, Sting and Great Muta, they, they weren't sharing some old times. They were out back there barking and arguing with each other, basically saying that 
uh, Great Muta doesn't feel like Samurai Del Sol has basically been been used properly here in NWA. He feels like he should be in the main event more often, be used more often. And the fact that he's only ever had three matches so far in the company, we're on our fit or our sixth show. I don't know, but I mean to be to his credit. He got his match. He's he's er, got his uh, point across. Sting put him in a match here tonight. And now the Pope sweeping the leg here of Samurai Del Sol. Back and forth action between these two. That's honestly the, the usual for these matches against Samurai Del Sol. Very back and forth. Now the Pope again. Uh oh, here we go. Here we go. Oh, kick right to the side. The Pope might be knocked unconscious. And I'm not wasting any time. Samurai Del Sol going to go for it. And oh, he almost got it, but the Pope, the Pope. Now the Pope has him. The Pope instead. The Pope, oh my goodness. About to steal one. About to steal one. He's got it. One, two. Oh, so close. The Pope nearly stealing the win here against Samurai Del Sol. Picking him back up again, though. Uh oh, this might be bad. This could be bad now for the Pope. Sent in the corner. Oh, a drop kick right to the lower spine. Oh, and that running knee there. Now look at the Samurai Del Sol. Not really interested in going for the win. Not really interested. In winning this matchup and continuing his undefeated record, more interested in hurting the Pope. Oh no, not again! Not again. Oh. This time, pulling him into the middle of the ring. This time, he's gonna go for the cover here. Is that gonna do it for the Pope? No, kick at one. Wow! The Pope could barely believe it. Now, Samurai Del Sol gonna go for it again. Samurai Del Sol. Salina de Sol goes for it. One, two, three. And that is all she wrote for this one. Samurai del Sol again, proving to be such a strong champion here. Right there, I thought he had it. I thought that was it right there. I thought the Pope had this one. And sadly, I was wrong. Right there, a second kick to the head was all it took. Somehow the Pope was able to kick out of that, but it, it messed with him enough so that he was able to get a clean Selena down soul. And there it is. Pitcher perfect, middle of the ring. Doesn't get much more perfect than that. Congratulations. To <gasps> Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Who is that? Wait, 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 wait. And look at this. Look at Samurai. Suplex. That's Kenta. Great Muta in the ring trying to be some defense here. But... I don't think he's, it's needed. And oh, never mind. It might be needed. Oh, Kenta. Great Muta still proving he could do some damage in the ring if he need be. Now it's a two-on-one assault, Kenta. This is what happens when you enter into the lion's den. Oh, kick right to the midsection. This is what happens. Great Muta being the great protector here. For Samurai Del Sol. Now picking up Kenta. Kenta though, fighting out of it. Now, oh, clothesline. Kenta, this is what happens when you enter into the lion's den, but still. Oh, I think we got Samurai Del Sol's next challenger. Uh, kid, I think we know his next challenger. But can we just talk about Great Muta? 
getting in the ring and defending Kenta like the way he did. I don't think that man could move like that, and still he was able to, regardless of fact. I Okay, I'm getting word from Sting. It is official. At our next pay-per-view, we will be getting Kenta versus Samurai Del Sol. But in the weeks to come, we will be doing a Beat the Clock Challenge in which the winner of the Beat the Clock Challenge will decide the stipulation for their match. Oh, my. So we're going to be getting Kenta versus Samurai. That's a big money match in my opinion. Whoa. But now it's time for our main event. But before that, like I said, I was going to tell you guys what the next pay-per-view is going to be for NWA. Ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased to announce that the next pay-per-view for NWA is going to be Parade of Champions. Yes, we are bringing the gold-plated pay-per-view back to NWA, and we are going to be bringing it back in the best way possible. We're already two matches confirmed for the card, in which we are going to have Big Swole versus Kira Hogan, and now Kento versus Samurai Del Sol. And one of these five men, or potentially none of them, and our surprise competitor who will be in the, bat or in the gauntlet match next week, will be facing off against NWA champion... Nick Aldis. I can say I got the Parade of Champions arena already finished, and I like what I see. I'm happy with what I got. All right, but now it is time, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for the Battle Royal. Remember, like I said, the only, this, this matchup is more important than you think. Whoever wins this matchup is not only going to be proven to be the last person in the Battle Royal or in the Gauntlet match next week, but it will also put the placements for everyone else. That is how big this matchup truly is. Like to know the who you got winning. Who is going to get that prominent spot? Who is going to be the one to get number six? Meanwhile, and here's the worst fact. If you're number one, if you're the first one eliminated in this matchup, you have to be scared. You don't know who that surprise competitor is going to be. We, we have no idea who that surprise competitor is going to be. Meanwhile, you know the other five people, so you could, you could basically figure out who, or set up who you're going to be facing. Coming out first now. It is one of the most underrated superstars, not just in NWA, but in wrestling universe itself. And that is TJP, former IWGP United States Champion, former Never Openweight Champion. This guy's won championships around the world, former inaugural NXT Cruiserweight Champion. This guy is where it's at. And honestly, one of his biggest rivalries we have seen in his career is that against Zack Sabre Jr., who, of course, is in this matchup. That rival, old rivalry being renewed, being revived here. There he is, though. TJP getting ready for Bal, showing that it is his time. That is finally his turn to be in the main event spot. But like I said, he's got four other men to go through tonight. And uh, why is the Titan trying to do that? I hate that. It's just, it, it's Josh, I need his help. But he's got to go against four other men here tonight. One of those men is this man. Alexander Hammerstone. Oh, Nelly, what a brawl. What a fight this man went into at hard times against Chris Hero and that amazing knockout match. It took two spears through the barricade, a massive su outside superplex. It, it took it all. He took it all. He took everything and then some, and then he gave it all back to Chris Hero to win the match. Welcome back, AJ. Just so you know what you missed... So Samurai Del Sol defeated the Pope rather quickly, but what happened afterwards was more importantly, Kenta debuting in NWA came out and attacked 
Samurai Del Sol. And he almost got away with it. Exposed up for Great Muta in the ring. Playing the Great Defender. Defending Samurai Del Sol. Was able to basically turn a two, two on one assault. It's confirmed now that at NWA Parade of Champions, our next pay-per-view, we will be seeing Samurai Del Sol versus Kenta. But, but in the weeks to come, we are going to be doing a oh, how is it? Um, a beat the clock challenge, in which the winner will be able to decide the stipulation. Coming out next here. It is a man that has had a very rough start here in NWA, and that is Zack Sabre Jr., one of the biggest stars known around the world. And he has not been able to basically get his foot in the door here in NWA. What I mean by that is that his debut matchup was against Nick Aldis, in which it got disrupted by Rich Swan, in which him and Aldis were both attacked by a sledgehammer. Next, his next matchup was at hard times against Rohit Raju. In which it ended in a double count out after Ohir Raju tried running away and Zack Sabre Jr. followed. Then he was supposed to have a rematch of that matchup in the opening match of today's card. In which it didn't happen because, well, it, it, the show started off in a five-way brawl between the five men and this battle royal. So he has not really had a proper first match here in NWA, but he's still 0-3 technically. Well, technically owned too because the first match never even started. Zack Sabre Jr., though, one of the favorites to win this matchup, in my opinion. And then there's this clown. Leader of the Maharaja, it's Rohit Raju. Rohit, of course, feels like a million dollars after he defeated Rich Swan and basically caused the downfall of Swan against Nick Aldis. He feels that like he is the rightful number one contender. He should have been added to the to the main events at hard times. But, of course, Sting and Jesse James both said no. And so he went out demanding a match. He is from TNA. AJ, I can't confirm. Um, he came out demanding a matchup in which we put him in a match against ZSJ. And uh, he didn't like it. The only thing I will give Rohit is he is very crafty. This guy will sneak up. He will do whatever it takes to win a match. He will be dirty, but he is smart. Does that give him an edge in a battle royal? I don't know, but we're about to find out now, aren't we? And last but not least, entering in number five. Well, last time he was in a battle royal, and he got screwed out of it by Alexander Hammerstone. Is it going to happen again? Here he is, Chris Hero. I am honestly surprised we are seeing Chris Hero after that knockout match. This guy took a beating from Alexander Hammerstone. Not to mention, I thought he was concussed. After getting speared through the second barricade and watching his head bounce against the concrete. But here he is, still fading, still still making a statement, still making a claim to fighting Nick Aldis. He says he's going to win this battle royal easily and take what is rightfully his. Honestly, if this guy does end up winning this battle royal, that is going to be scary. This is the kind of guy you don't want to win. Honestly, it, it, Chris Hero as the last guy in the battle roll or in the gauntlet match is terrifying. All right, here we go. TJP, Rohit Raju. Going to stop it for one quick second. All right, here we go. And right now, TJP going after Alex or going after Chris Hero. Meanwhile, Rohit Raju and Zack Saber Jr. going at it, and Alexander Hammerstone kind of just playing uh, out of it for a moment. Oh, knockout blow! All right, the TJP. Now Alexander Hammerstone going after Rohit Raju. 
Meanwhile, Chris Hero trying to get, li get rid of TJP. And now Hero, first one in danger. Chris Hero almost getting eliminated there from TJP. And you know, ZSJ. ZSJ, I'm not sure if he saw TJP really or not. Right now, Zack Sabre honestly playing it very smart. Letting the other four competitors fight and he just resting. That is smart in my opinion. Oh, right there. Whoa, TJP showing off his stuff. And now TJ picking up ZSJ. Unable to get him though. Oh, and Chris Hero going right after TJP still. Meanwhile, Rohit Raju now going after ZSJ. And now TJP again just trying to get rid of the much larger Chris Hero. Meanwhile, Alexander Hammerstone. And Zack Sabre Jr. going at it in the middle of the ring. Rohit Raju playing like the coward that he is. And trying to run away. And now, oh, ZSJ. Going for the submission here. Hammerstone. This is not good. And now Rohit going after TJP for some reason. I don't know why, but okay. Oh, and there it goes. TJP eliminated by Chris Hero. Hero getting the first elimination. That would mean TJP is going to start off the next match, or the gauntlet match against the mystery competitor. And now, oh, Hero going to work now on ZSJ. And now, oh, and there it goes. Zack Sabre Jr. Jr. enters in third. Right now, Chris Hero just went on an elimination streak, eliminating both TJP and ZSJ. Right now, that is not good odds for TJP and Zack Sabre Jr. Hero right now being anything but the hero, honestly. Eliminating the smaller competitors. And now Rohit Raju and, and B, or, uh, Chris Hero. Oh my goodness! Rohit Raju might be knocked out cold. Oh, never mind. And now Hammerstone trying to get involved. Hammerstone now. Hammerstone! Oh my goodness! And Rohit Raju going to take the advantage here and going after. Alexander Hammerstone while he was busy fighting off Chris Hero. And now Hammerstone throwing Rohit into the corner. And now what is this? What is this? Rohit. Oh my goodness. Now swinging neckbreaker. One of these three men is going to end up in the finals in the gauntlet match, but which one is it going to be? Right now, Alexander Hammerstone looking amazing here, taking out both Rohit and Chris Hero. What, oh. Hero, instead of going after Alexander, going going after Rohit, why? And there goes Rohit Raju! We're down now to two! We're down now to two! Rohit Raju will enter in the gauntlet match at number four. Oh no, that means the probability that these two are going to be the last two. And oh! A headbutt! Chris Hero literally eliminated everybody from that match. Chris Hero eliminated everyone.
Are you kidding me? Right there, that headbutt. I'm surprised that worked. I thought Hero was concussed. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so that means next week during the gauntlet match is going to be the surprise entrance at number one versus TJP first. After that, ZSJ will come in. So we have the potential of TJP versus ZSJ rematch here. After that is Rohit Raju coming in at number four. Alexander Hammerstone at number five. And at number six is Chris Hero. Oh, boy. Like I said, you do not want Hero to be your last guy. A lot of rivalries that could happen here during this gauntlet match. I, oh man, I, I do not envy anyone. I'm well, gonna go after this matchup, yet, or this card, yet, again, this crazy card. We started off the night, it was supposed to be ZSJ versus Rohit Raju, but turned into a five way brawl. All of them clay, uh, staking claims to the NWA World Championship, in which it was decided they would all get an opportunity in the gauntlet match next week, them and one other competitor. And then led into the battle royal that we just saw. Next we saw we we saw wrestling prodigies versus the Gorillas of Destiny in which one via count out after Tonga Loa accidentally threw Joe Henning into the ring rather than his partner Tamatunga. Next Kira Hogan versus Jade Cargill in which it was a good matchup between these two but Kira Hogan showing why she is the NWA women's champion to defeating Jade Cargill. Next, Samurai Del Sol defeated the Pope after a back and forth battle for the ages. But uh, ended up, Del Sol was just way too much to put away to Pope. After the matchup, Kenta came and attacked Samurai Del Sol, in which the attack did not go as planned thanks to the great protector, Great Muta, defending Samurai Del Sol. Then turned into a 2 on 1 beatdown. After that was a battle royal to determine the placements for next week's gauntlet match in which Chris Hero eliminated all other competitors. So he is a guaranteed in the last matchup in the gauntlet match and that is scary when you think about it. Regardless guys, my name is Jesse James as this has been NWA Power. Thank you all for joining me today and I look forward to seeing you all next week. And I will let you all know one last little secret for this episode. Next episode of NWA Power, the gauntlet match, is going to be pre-recorded. See you all next week.